I move now to question number three, and over the right honourable Chris Hipkins. Mr Speaker, to the Acting Prime Minister, does he stand by all of his government's statements and actions? That's you. That's you. <laughs> uh, the pause was because the same question was asked when it was question two, and did not the, minister, the former Prime Minister see that? The answer is ditto. Mr Speaker, does he stand by his government's commitment in the National Act coalition document to, quote, amend the Overseas Investment Act 2005 to limit ministerial decision-making to national security concerns? And is he confident that all parties in the coalition will be supporting that amendment? If that wasn't the case, we would not have signed up to it. But the reality is, uh, I said if that was not the case, we would not have signed up to it. Words matter, Mr Robinson. Not just gobbledygook. And here comes the... And the reason we signed up to it... The so, reason we signed up to it was because we could see, under the previous administration, they had no idea of the importance of international investment and the security of long-term policy, which persuades people to come here. Oh, Mr Speaker, does he agree with Winston Peters in 2017 that, quote, Last year, 465,000 hectares of land was sold to foreigners. That's up to four times on the year before. We in New Zealand first are going to stop land sales to foreigners and house sales to foreigners who don't come and live here. If not, why not? Words matter. Uh, well, can I just say that, uh, having heard that uh, a quote from one of the brightest guys that have ever come to this parliament, <laughs> uh, it was voiced by not me, a previous Labour Party person said that, I was just borrowing his words. But the point of the matter is that we were looking to ensure that any offshore investment in this country had the national interest and economic benefit of New Zealand, like Ireland, like, like uh, countries like Singapore, first in mind. And with that in mind, we welcome overseas investment. Parliamentary question, Mr Speaker. So why is the government repealing that test from the Act? Because, like everything that Labour Party put its hands on, they didn't interpret it properly. <laughs> <laughs> Mr Speaker, does he stand by his government's commitment to repeal the Reserve Bank of New Zealand Monetary Policy Amendment Act, or does he agree with Shane Jones that the dual mandate brings us, quote, into international best practice area? This is not a journey into the unknown. This is to link up progressive, far-sighted government passing legislation that shows a great similarity to other reserve banks and their mandates, which have, have moved away from this bare, sparse, barren approach reflective of Don Brash's stewardship of said bank. Um, um, I'm certain that members and those in the gallery and those who are watching on TV are, are going to enjoy today's conversation because they're hearing so many wise words being repeated back to them, in this case by the opposition, uh, with respect to National Party members. But we have to move on. The, the point is, is this. No. No we, no, we have to move on in this context. Because... The Minister, the Minister of Finance is wrestling with something very similar to what's emerged in Australia lately, and that is inflation, unlike the previous uh, finance minister said, is not foreign grown, it's home grown, and massively so, because of their squanderous expenditure. And that's why we had to have a talk with the Government Reserve Bank and get him to help us both ways to turn back the tide of inflation and give New Zealanders a chance to go into the future, the hope that we'll have a better cost of living. Supplementary question, does he therefore agree with Winston Peters that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand Monetary Policy Amendment Act, quote, makes it very important changes to the Reserve Bank Act that will significantly improve monetary policy as it relates to its impact on New Zealanders and the real economy, end quote. If so, why is the government repealing them? Because at the time that Mr Winston Peters said that, he was having regard to an immigration policy which he had persuaded the then government to adapt. It hardly got there, and when the handbrake went off, they ran amok, and in the last year, have bought in, a, they bought in 118,000 immigrants. That's a massive record for this country. No infrastructure, no houses, no health, no nothing. And he now wants us to carry on with the same policy. No, it's important that we address the circumstances we're in right now, left by them. 
Minister's Speaker. Uh, point of order, Kieran McAnulty. That was an interesting answer, but it wasn't to the question. The question was about Reserve Bank, not about what was talked about. Well, the question was actually about the, a quote from the Right Honourable Winston yeah. Peters from some time ago and what the Acting Prime Minister thought of that quote. And I think he answered it fairly concisely. <laughs> Does the Prime Minister or the Acting Prime Minister agree with David Seymour that, quote, you can't trust Winston Peters and a lot of things will be much, much harder than they otherwise would, and that Winston Peters is, quote, just a muppet. The problem is he can't work with anyone. The good news is he's going down in flames. He's yesterday's man. And if not, why not? <laughs> because um, even politically, as the, book, as the good book says, nobody's beyond redemption. <laughs> Nobody's for not understanding how helpful a person can be. And the people who should be the authority on that are sitting over there. Because without our open-mindedness and liberality, no one would have ever heard of those people ever again. But they hardly got the job and they thought they got there by themselves. And when the handbrake left, what a mess they were. And my evidence for that is, in their first week of being a parliamentary opposition, they asked 6,000 questions which kind of suggests since 2023, so in 2020 to 2023, they had no answers. <laughs> the Honourable David Seymour. Has the government just, ever reversed just, position... Hold on. Just a bit of order. The question is being answered. The Honourable David Seymour. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Has the government ever reversed uh, policy positions before, uh, such as putting on a bonfire the RNZ TVNZ merger yeah, nice income question. insurance? Out of order. So we'll go now to question number three, four. Yeah, point of order. It better be one. Uh, it's a it's a question about government policy. Uh, surely I can ask about policy. No, you're, asking the about, you're asking about uh, you were citing a previous government's policy, and as you know, that's not oh. permissible. The member himself uh, would have probably elicited that very rule from a speaker in the past. <laughs> uh, 